Thank you. I now recognize the ranking member of the full committee, Mr. Raskin, for five minutes of questions. Thank you kindly, Mr. Chairman. I want to extend my sympathy to everyone here who lost family members in this nightmare. Um, in the early weeks of the pandemic, public health experts projected that nursing homes and long-term facilities would be sharply hit by COVID, uh, and the federal government's lethally chaotic response exacerbated staffing shortages and deprived nursing homes of protective equipment and testing kits that they needed. Uh, President Trump pledged to, quote, deploy every resource and power that we have to protect older Americans, and yet the last administration failed to nationalize the supply chain and fully ut utilize FEMA's capabilities to provide adequate PPE testing and resources to nursing homes and long-term facilities. Um, public reporting revealed that supplies were limited, did not arrive at all, or were unusable. I want to enter into the record a CNN article titled, Nursing Homes Received Defective Equipment as Part of Trump Administration Supply Initiative, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. Thank you. Uh, as a result, nursing homes were left with scant supplies of PPE, testing, and other resources necessary to protect their residents and staff. Even more, the Trump administration took steps to relax federal oversight and infection control in nursing homes during the pandemic. Some nursing homes left unregulated gave hydroxychloroquine to COVID positive patients, a treatment shown not to be useful or safe for the coronavirus. And by May of 2020, residents and workers in nursing homes and long-term care facilities accounted for roughly 40% of total COVID deaths in the United States. Dr. Grabowski, how did the Trump administration's failures to offer a national testing and PPE procurement strategy and corresponding deregulation of the nursing home industry undercut efforts to limit the spread of COVID-19 in the nursing homes? Sure. The, the Trump administration pushed out the procurement to the states, which then pushed it out to the nursing homes. So nursing homes were competing with one another for testing kits and PPE, and they were competing with hospitals. And unfortunately, we put our nursing homes with the frailest and most vulnerable individuals in our system at the back of the line, where they should have been at the front of the line to get these supplies. As you noted, uh, later, uh, the Trump administration did send two weeks of supplies, but much of that was defective. I had been on TV, not as much as Mrs. Dean's on TV, but occasionally during that time period, people would see me on TV talking about PPE. Staff started sending me this defective PPE just to, just to show me. So I had this arriving to, to my office at, at Harvard. It was a complete and utter debacle. So instead of a coordinated nationwide strategy, the way some countries had, we had this dog-eat-dog -dog system at the lowest levels in a race to the bottom, basically. We, we, we should have nationalized, as you said, the supply chain. We used the Defense Production Act, you'll remember, for ventilators. We never used that for PPE. Uh, uh, Representative Dingell already described going to China, trying to use trash bags. That, that's completely unacceptable. So one of the driving factors in the nursing home infection and high death rates was the surrounding community spread of COVID. I remember when some nursing homes in my district were hit and uh, the people there were convinced that it was uh, the staffers who had been taking it essentially inadvertently, unwittingly from facility to facility. Um, how would the unprecedented rate of COVID spread across a given community have a direct impact on the spread of COVID within the long-term facilities and nursing homes? Uh, it both came from the community, and then, as you suggested, it was staff working across uh, facilities. There's a really elegant study that used cell phone data and was able to track staff moving across nursing homes and spreading the COVID virus across those nursing homes. So when we lack PPE, when we lack testing, uh, there, there's really good evidence to suggest COVID was coming coming from the surrounding community. And as you suggested, the secret weapon of, of COVID was that it was asymptomatic. It, it was, uh, you know, th this was not anything these staff did wrong. They thought they were okay. We didn't have testing or PPE, and so they were they were bringing it in uh, unknowingly. All right. So we had no federal strategy, and I remember in Congress we were begging for a, a national strategy. Um, and then there were all kinds of conflicting signals sent out about hydroxychloroquine. This will disappear in April. This will all go away. China's doing a great job. I'm in constant touch with China and so on. What should the federal government have done 
and what can we do next time in the early months of a pandemic to prevent like this rapid spread? The federal government next time needs to own the problem from the beginning. Uh, as you said, nationalize the supply chain, ensure that every nursing home in the country has adequate supplies, personal protective equipment, rapid testing. We also need to support the workforce. Far too many nursing homes had uh, staff shortages, uh, staff were getting sick, staff left in, in, in large numbers. We lost hundreds of thousands of staff. Uh, this was the most dangerous job in America. It was, uh, there were incredibly high death rates, and so, uh, staff, not surprisingly, went to work for, for, you know, in other parts of the economy. Some have come back, but not all of them. So we have a big, uh, a big shortage right now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yield back. 